This is Share the Vision, presented by the Resource Center, a discussion of the programs and services of the Resource Center and about issues related to individuals with disabilities. Today, we encourage you to smile broadly, happily, because we are going to talk about the TRC Dental Services. I'm here at 890 East 2nd Street, and I'm happy to introduce to you the manager of this dental practice, Lisa Smirker. Lisa, thank you for inviting me down. Thank you for being here. This is a wonderful place to come and even take a quick tour of because it is such a comprehensive, modern dental facility. Yes, it is. We've gone through renovations. Uh, We are state-of-the-art. We have all the advanced technology to offer our patients, and we will currently be undergoing future renovations to add more operatories to our clinic. This is already a great place, and you just told me that it's going to be even greater. Even greater, yes. I think one of the things we want to do in the early minutes of this program is to let the community know, anyone that's listening to this on the radio or eventually online, that they can come here for dental services. Yes, we are open to everyone and we will turn no patient away. So we see patients from all paths. We do see patients with disabilities. We see patients, uh, uh, any family, we'll see patients from age 1 to age 100. One of the things that we often do when we talk about any of these services related to the Resource Center, and I say we, my usual co-host for this program, Steve Watterson, is unavailable to be on the air with us today because of another commitment. But we often remind people that even though these clinics, these opportunities exist under the umbrella of the Resource Center, they are open to the entire community. Yes, we certainly are. I think we've emphasized that enough. Now you're going to introduce me to one of your dentists here and I wish that you would do so. Yes, I'd like to introduce you to Dr. Jean Yang. She's our newest dentist with us, and she is here full-time. Dr. Yang, hello. Hello, how are you? Well, fine, thank <laughs> you. And how long have you been here? I've been here uh, starting July this year. So just a few months. Yes, but I graduated a long time ago. <laughs> how do you like it so far here working for the Resource Center? I'm really uh, amazed by the technique. Everybody's uh, surprised. Sometimes you don't think people are still using old x-ray, but uh, the technique here and then the, everything was uh, up to standard really uh, surprised me. What you're suggesting to us is that the level of care, the advancements in dental care are really moving right along, mm-hmm. and the resource center is keeping right up with them. Yes, they really uh, welcome everybody to come. And then even though a self-pay patient, not just uh, like some people with disabled, so they welcome everybody to really get into dental and uh, care. So then the first uh, entry of uh, bacteria is from the mouth. So it's very important to have a good teeth and have uh, the good health, our hygiene, and the best uh, smile we have. I wanted to give you the opportunity. It's a little soapbox, maybe, if you want to stand up on it and talk to the community here. The kinds of things that you encounter on a day-to-day basis in terms of things that we might know we're supposed to do but forget to do, what would your recommendations be to me or anybody who's listening, Dr. Yang? I think a lot of people ignore it because they think that um, you know they have 26 teeth, 28 teeth, it's fine, don't worry, they can eat and chew. So they kind of ignore that. But the key point is protecting your teeth. Instead, um, you do have to see dentists every six months, check up on top of your own home care, like brushing and flossing every day. But you do have to check up with your teeth. And then uh, not just sometimes you just have to take x-ray because uh, dentist eyes are not x-ray eyes. So those things you do have to come in to see a dentist. You said brush and floss. And I just want to go back to that for just a moment because I know young people have been taught, hopefully they do brush their teeth. Mm -hmm. Should young people floss their teeth too? Sometimes, I remember when my children were growing up, I had a little trouble with that one. Yes, when the kids grow up, they have baby teeth, so they can use some of uh, the whatever in the dental, uh, the pharmacy section they have, it. they can use those, like quick way to learn the habit to floss every night. But uh, earlier, the parents build up the habit for flossing at night, um, every night before they go to bed. It's easier when they grow up, at, when they get older, because uh, when they see the dentist later the age, you're trying to tell them yeah, the floss and brush is very difficult to have the habit build up. So if the parents have the good oral hygiene have it passed on to the kid so then in the future the kid will grow up flossing every night. Uh Aha, so teenagers out there should be flossing their teeth every night. Yes, 
So before, like, I never floss before, like, say, don't get me wrong that I'm a dentist, so I should floss it right from get-go. My little hometown basically have no dentist also. We just see one day and nobody tell me floss and brush. But I guess because I've been a dentist, when I met the dentist, so the only way to get rid of the cavity is brush and floss. So I follow. I'm a good patient. I'm sorry. That yeah. <laughs> that's how I follow. Ever since I met him, I said, floss and brush, I listened to him. And then uh, ever since then, I was, like, really into the dentistry, so... I was going to ask you that, and we'll need to close on this because we have other people to meet in a minute here, Dr. Yang. But if I understood what you just told me correctly, you grew up in a place where there was not a dentist. Where did you grow up? Uh, I actually, like, you know, born in China, but then we moved to Hong Kong. But Hong Kong is not the British that time. But the little village we live, they really hardly ever have a dental come. Only once a year, like a dentist in a mobile car to check on you, and that's it. So and then we don't even use Novocaine stuff to numb us up for filling. Just get in there and do it. So a lot of, like, education. But now they evolve or change a lot. Uh, like even in U.S. here, they change a lot. They try to do more education to people, trying to encourage encourage kid to have brushing and flossing and try to pass the, like, the toothbrush to the kid and also to the adult so make sure they have this education. I just want to finish by saying that first encounter with a dentist when you finally got to see one on a regular basis must have been a very powerful experience for you because it sort of set you up for a career. Yes, I love my dentist then because I was looking. I have a texture second stain and looking for dentists all my life, and I guess my parents feel bad for me. But then, uh, but uh, my dentist is said, well, you don't need that. You just need to do the braces and brush and floss and then do some bleaching. I was like, go for it. And then ever since then, I decided to be a dentist and make people smile. I hope the listeners have enjoyed this conversation. I certainly have, Dr. Yang. Thank you for your time, your spirit, your energy, the enthusiasm you bring to this. And I hope people will come and uh, see you and uh, open their mouths. Thank you. Thank you. I want to see you guys, too. (laughs) That was very, very nice. Thank you very much. We are touring the dental facility here at the Resource Center, and this is 890 East 2nd Street in Jamestown. Our tour guide is Lisa Smirker. She's the manager of this entire operation. And who is the person I'm about to meet? And here we have Dr. Paul Meyerhoff. He's one of our other wonderful dentists. Dr. Meyerhoff, how do you do? Oh, I'm well, thanks. I must say this is a very special experience for me because I can't think of any time when I've ever seen two dentists in the same day, much less one right after the other. And we just spent a few minutes with Dr. Yang, and now I'm happy to meet you also. How is the practice going? How are you? It's great. It's, um, I hate to tell you, but it's a lot of fun. Now, wait a minute. <laughs> this just in, being a dentist is a lot of fun? That's why I'm a dentist. I enjoy every day, and I enjoy every patient. What is it that you enjoy so much about your work? Well, mainly the patients, because they're all different and they're all very anxious. And so it's really a tremendous experience to be able to provide a service and relieve their anxiety. Why do you suppose it is that people are so anxious when they come to the dentist? Have you been able to hone in on that reason or those reasons in your professional work? Well, I think it starts in childhood. Uh, people are deathly afraid of the dentist from the time, from from their early ages. You know, their earliest experiences sometimes were not so favorable. So, you know, it's a challenge to overcome that. What do you do to put people at ease, regardless of their age and, and the level of dental health that they come in here with? Uh, do you want to share some of your techniques <laughs> with us? Well, the first thing is, if you hurt somebody they're not going to want to come back. So you don't hurt them. You do not hurt them. So whatever you can do, you don't hurt your patient. And then they'll love you forever. We've been talking throughout this program so far about the increased advancement in the level of technology that has come to your field, that has come here to the Resource Center. And I just wanted you to speak to that for a moment. You've been in practice for some time? Long time. I hate to tell you how long. You don't have to tell me how I'm long. Good. But you have some experience doing okay. this. And, yeah. and how has it changed and it advanced? How is it better today than it may have been even five or ten years ago? Well, you know, there are new materials. There's new anesthetic that's better. And uh, basically it's just the new materials. I'm an old-fashioned kind of dentist, and so some of the things that, that are In the forefront of dentistry, implants, for example, I've never done them, 
I have done some of the crowns. I don't prefer to do implants because I don't prefer to share the liability of an implant because of the possibility of failure. And there have been some improvements in, say, root canal therapy. I'm not sure they're all that much better because your chances of success with a root canal is about 95% if it's done properly. And when I was in dental school a long, long time ago with Louis Grossman, who might have been the inventor of modern root canals, it was about 95% then. I think the difference is that it, it takes a lot less time. Two things to finish up on, just to follow up on. One, the new materials. What are you using these new, new materials for, and how are they better? Well, they're quicker. Compos- in rebuilding teeth? Yeah. yeah, composites. Composites are they're flowable, so that makes them fairly easy to work with. In the old, old days, I worked with uh, Dr. Bonacore at the University of Rochester Eastman Dental Center, and he was the one who pioneered bonding with uh, comp- composites and resins. So that was a while ago. And uh, it's only the materials have improved since then. Dr. Bonacore was made himself very famous, and he was world famous and somewhat wealthy. And he actually was in South America and giving a lecture and at the reception had some bad oysters and it killed him. Whoa. So the poor Dr. Bonacore, he, he was a victim of his own success. But in the meantime, <laughs> in the meantime, these materials have improved over the years and gotten better. Well, <laughs> let me do one other thing with you here, Dr. Meyerhoff, in the interests of time. Because root canal, you say those words, and it can, people can react quite fearfully right away. If we take care of our teeth for the most part and are able to avoid accident and injury, can we live most of our lives and, and avoid ever having a root canal? I think you can, but, you know, accidents are inevitable. And if you get in an accident and the only thing you've damaged is the tooth, you're lucky. You know, you could break a neck. You could, you know, have a permanent injury anywhere on your body. So say you damage a tooth. Say you bruise a tooth and there's a bruise on the apex of the uh, tooth that restricts the blood flow, the tooth dies. This is a tooth that's never decayed, but it needs a root canal because the tissue inside the tooth is now necrotic. And it's not such a big deal. It should not be such a big deal. People, you, you go into the tooth, you remove the necrotic debris, you seal it, and it's done. Dr. Meyerhoff, thank you for your time here. It's been fun <laughs> well, fun to talk to you and learn all of these things. You know, you come down, sit down, talk to your dentist, you don't realize all the science and all the all of the the, the, the technology that goes behind it. So this has really been quite fun. Well, I hope it was, you know, it was fun for me. Have a good rest of the day. Yeah, thank you. We've moved down the hall here to meet a couple of other people who are active every day, working hard to help people with their oral health here at the Resource Center's Dental Clinic, 890 East 2nd Street in Jamestown. Lisa Smirker, our guide, who is next? So now we have our registered dental hygienist, Mariah Buchanan. Hello, Mariah. Hi there. Congratulations on being a registered dental hygienist. Thank you. She said that with emphasis. (laughs) Tell me a little bit about your work here, how long you've been here, and, and the, the, the feeling that you have for doing this. I absolutely love coming to my job every day and wow. giving people beautiful, perfect smiles. How sweet. How <laughs> nice the, the, the way you uh, put that. What's the role of the hygienist in this office? A dental hygienist, and hopefully here in every office, is to maintain people's personal oral hygiene, give them education, and make sure that they have healthy gums. How do you do all of those things? <laughs> well, I educate patients on their specific needs. It's a case-by-case thing. And then I always scale their teeth to completion and polish and floss and give them the tools they need to set them on a good day, every day. Dr. Yang, a little earlier, uh, we interviewed, and uh, she made some recommendations. But what would you say? What are the most common things you recommend to patients who come and go here on a regular basis in terms of the things they might not know to do or might not remember to do? 
always be brushing twice a day, morning and night. Nighttime is the most important time to brush because at nighttime our mouths are more dry. And if you don't brush away the bacteria from that you've eaten and drank all day, it gives an easier environment for that bacteria to cause cavities. And flossing once a day, every day. Thank you very much. You're welcome. One of your other hygienists is also with us. Yes, we have Carissa McKinney. Hello, Carissa. Hi, how are you? Fine, and nice to meet you. Uh, you heard what uh, Mariah said there. What do you want to say in addition to that in terms of how you approach your work and the things that you say to your patients here? Well, I work here on Mondays and Fridays, and then during the school year, I'm at Jamestown High School Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Thursdays, and I provide patient care there as well. Is it different? Do, do the populations, are they different enough so that you find yourself dealing with different issues and different things between places? Um, not really. I just see a lot of, well, all kids at the school, but a lot of lack of oral care, I'd say. So you're really at the high school and being a teacher, even though you're not in the classroom. Exactly. Yep. Is it your impression? Do you see people enough to know that they're actually getting it when you want them to get it in terms of listening to what you say? For the most part, I'm, I provide cleanings there, fluoride treatments, and sealants. And then if I see anything, I refer them here to the dental clinic on 2nd Street. One of the other aspects of the work here that we haven't talked about, and we've been emphasizing through this program, I hope often enough, that these dental services are available to everyone in the community. You do not need to be associated with the resource center or employed by or a person with disabilities in order to avail yourselves of these dental services. But you do have some special things that do make it easier for people with disabilities, and one of you wants to address this. We have a Hoyer lift that's in one of our operatories, so this makes it easier for patients that are in wheelchairs to sit in a dental chair and receive care out of a regular dental chair, which makes it in turn easier for the dentist or hygienist to be able to give them the proper best care that they deserve. This is Mariah speaking. I didn't, I didn't identify you as I put the microphone to you. But I was just thinking as you said that, reflecting on some of my own experiences sometimes in the chair, if you will, that even a person without disabilities, long procedure or waiting for a while, it can get a little comfortable just sitting there. I can imagine a person with disabilities might be even more challenging to just for the time that it would take to do a cleaning, for example. Yeah, it can be at times, but we always give them breaks and make sure that they're well taken care of. You are both very happy with your work here, and I want to check my time. I think I have time to bring up one other subject, maybe among the three of you. A lot of, th th there is a lot of interest out there in the magazines and on TV today about having brighter teeth and wider teeth and you know, what one might call cosmetics. Is that something that you deal with regularly here, too? Something that we certainly would would offer to any patient who is interested in um, whitening their smile, we treat more preventative and um, you know more preventative cases. But we certainly are expanding, and we, we 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 do all all types of dental treatment here. And it's better if you want to have a brighter smile to talk to your dentist or your hygienist about it than it is just to go pick something off the shelf in the drugstore. Yes. I totally agree with that. <laughs> I got three yeses. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. One right after the other here for that one. So just to take that away, listeners, that if you are interested or, or young people in your family are, that maybe the right way to go is through a dentist here at the Resource Center or your own personal dentist as opposed to just picking something off the shelf. Yeah. Are there other aspects of the work here in Jamestown that uh, we should talk about? Because we're going to spend a few minutes at the end of the show because there's a second dental clinic here in Chautauqua County. But anything else from Jamestown at the moment? Well, um, as we've said, we're, we are a state-of-the-art dental clinic. Uh, we, we have seven operatories here currently. That and means seven examinations. Seven treatment rooms, yes. Say, say the word you, you use again. Operatories. Operatories. Okay. And so we will be expanding, and um, we're, we're growing. The Resource Center Dental Clinic is growing. We, we have new doctors. We have new hygienists joining us. We're, we're, we're expanding, and we are open to the public, and we want you all to come down and see us. Now, what is the best way for people to get a hold of you? Telephone call still or 
telephone call to the Resource Center, and we can provide that phone number for you. We are at 896 East 2nd Street in Jamestown, and we also have our Dunkirk Dental Clinic at Lakeshore. And so, so there's a couple ways you can reach out either um, through our website. We have contact forms. The, the website is uh, resourcecenter.com. Org, and it is the dental clinic, so there's a separate dental. So you can find all our contact information there. It's resourcecenter.org, dental. So here at the Jamestown office, the TRC dental office, we have met Lisa Smirker, who's been our guide, and the two hygienists who just spoke, Mariah Buchanan and Carissa McKinney, and also the two of the dentists here, Dr. Paul Meyerhoff and Dr. Jean Yang. Thank you all for the opportunity to come here and visit this uh, Jamestown office. It, it is fun and a, a good reminder for me, although I think I take pretty good care of my teeth, <laughs> to remember to do the things that we've been instructed to do here today. So, uh, Lisa and all, thank you very much for this opportunity. Thank you, Dennis. Now we're going to magically take the listeners to Dunkirk. On the line with me now from the Dunkirk Dental Office, two of the dental assistants there, Gladys Alvario and Stacy Morell. Gladys, first, hello. Hi. Nice to have the opportunity to speak with you. Thank you for coming on. And Stacy, hello to you. Hello. Now, I may have you point yourselves out during the course of this interview just just because it uh, will make it a little easier for me and for the listeners to know which one of you uh, is speaking. But, uh, Gladys, I want to start with you. Tell me a little bit about your work as a dental assistant there at the Dunkirk office. I've been working at the Dunkirk Dental Clinic for about nine years. I'm a dental assistant. I work with Dr. Vona, and I don't know what else to say. (laughs) Well, you you did point out the name of the dentist there, and it is Dr. Vona. Yes. Is it spelled V-O-N-A? Yes. Dr. Vona, your dentist there, and uh, I understand that you see a lot of patients, both English speakers and Spanish speakers, is that correct? Yes, we do. And you are bilingual, Gladys? Yes, I am. That must make people feel a lot more comfortable. We talked in the Jamestown segment a little bit about the fact that sometimes people are a little uncomfortable going to the dentist in the first place. It must help someone who doesn't speak the same language as the dentist to have someone there who can facilitate in the way that you do. Yes, it's very helpful because we do have a lot of Spanish-speaking patients. Let's introduce Stacy again. Stacy, thank you for coming along. What would you like to say about the nature of your work there and how you help the patients and help the doctor? Well, I've been here the same amount of time as Gladys, nine years. We have six operatories, and um, I work with Dr. Vona, and we also have Katie here, who's a hygienist. We have a lot of -of state-of-the-art equipment here, and we also have a view of the lake, which makes patients feel more comfortable and relaxed. Stacy, I did mean to ask this, and I forgot to as we got into as we got into this. But exactly where is the Dunkirk Dental Clinic located? We're located at 186 Lakeshore Drive West in Dunkirk. And I would imagine that Lakeview is something that uh, adds a lot to the uh, um, feeling of the practice. There, a lot of times they'll uh, put things up on the wall for patients to look at. Or uh, I think in one instance, I even saw something on the ceiling in a dental office once when someone was uh, lying down and, and looking up at it. But this sort of adds a natural pretty picture for people to enjoy as they go there. Yes, you can see it from every operatory and the patients love it. Uh, tell me a little more, either one of you, about what it is that you do in terms of working with the patients to make them comfortable, a little bit about your technique, perhaps, and and how you welcome them and assist them in the office when they come. We we bring the patients back and seat them, and uh, we assist in um, chair side with Dr. Vona, and whatever he needs, we're there to help. Do you find that uh, patients are generally comfortable in the office, or do they, as I suggested earlier, sometimes have some anxiety about being in the dental clinic there? Some do. Some patients do, um, but we make them feel as comfortable as we can. Can you tell me, is it difficult to get an appointment? Do people need to call in in advance a, a, a great deal, or can you see people relatively quickly there? Most of the time we can see them the same day, um, especially if they have an emergency. 
Boy, that's and a we gr- do accept walk-in emergency appointments. That's a great relief to people then to know that yes. uh, that service is available uh, almost any time. Yes. Is there any other part of this, uh, either Gladys or Stacy, that I should bring out before we uh, wrap this up uh, in terms of uh, what you do there? I'm just trying to, you know, without being in the room or being in the place, get a pretty good picture of what happens there. Uh, I think we're at every, pretty much everything. Let's finish it up this way. It sounds like, Gladys and Stacy, that you both enjoy your work there a great deal. Is that so, Gladys? Yes. What is it that you like about it so much? Well, I really think patients feel very comfortable coming here. We have a great team. A lot of our patients come and they always say how comfortable they feel when they leave the office, and we make sure they come back, and they do. Stacy, anything you would like to add to that in terms of how you enjoy your work now over a long period of time there at the Dunkirk Dental Clinic? I think Gladys pretty much said what I was going to say. I love coming to work every day and working with patients and just making them feel like they're getting the, the right standard of care. Well, I want to thank you both very much, dental assistants Gladys Alvario and Stacy Morell, for spending this time with us on Share the Vision today, and uh, I appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you. Today on Share the Vision, an introduction to the Resource Center's dental clinics in both Jamestown and Dunkirk. The Jamestown Clinic is located at 890 East 2nd Street. If you'd like to call for information or an appointment, 485-2659, 485 2659 Five, nine. The Dunkirk Clinic is located at 186 Lakeshore Drive West in Dunkirk, as you heard, overlooking Lake Erie. The number to phone there for more information or an appointment, 366-1661. 366-1661. Take good care of your teeth, and thank you for listening to Share the Vision today.